This is Lesson 104 in Saxon's third edition, Algebra 1, Abstract Rational Equations. <clears throat> All right, we've been doing a lot with rational equations lately, and that's good because it's going to keep it fresh in your mind. Just like in Lesson 103, where we had to start by finding the least common multiple, we're going to do that also. But the difference in this, in with the abstract, is that whatever you have for your denominator, x in this case x or m, they cannot be equal to zero because you cannot have zero as a denominator. So we're going to say, okay, x and m cannot be equal to zero, and our least common multiple in this case is x m. When we do our multiplication. So x times xm times 1 over x, we see that the two x's are going to cancel out, leaving us with 1m, or just m that I've moved down here. And then xm times b over m, the m's cancel out, leaving us with bx equals cmx. I always try to put everything in alphabetical order, just kind of one of my little quirky things. All right. So we're solving for m. So the goal is, in this kind of um, problem, to get all the m's on the same side together. <clears throat> so we're going to subtract it from the left side, move it to the right side. And when we do that, we get rid of it here. And all we have left is the bx equals cmx minus m. Now, we're still going to have to isolate this m, so that means we need to get rid of everything over here with it, which would be the x and the c. And then we can assume there's a minus 1 here. So, we're going to divide by cx minus 1 on both sides, and what that will get us here is m, and what it gets us over on this side is b over cx minus 1. And you'll notice that I've got this arrow here pointing to this parentheses because what I actually did before I divided was factor out the m, and when I factor out the m, I'm left with cx minus 1. That's how I got that. Okay. Let's do the next one. In this example, we're told that we have to find b. And our least common multiple is b, d, and neither one of those can equal 0. So let's say b, d times a over b plus b, d times c over d equals bd, I'm sorry, not d, times x. I was thinking x. All right, and then when we cross-cancel, the b's will cancel out, leaving us with ad. Here the d's cancel out, leaving us with bc equals bdx. Now, if I want to get, if I want to solve for b, I need to move this term that has a b in it to the other side. I cancel it out there and I'm left with ad equals bdx minus bc. And then if I factor out the b, which is what I want to do, it's common to both. I have b times dx minus c left. So I'm going to divide by b times dx minus c on both sides. And then I'm going to be canceling out here <clears throat> uh, 
everything except, I'm sorry, not D, not the B. I don't want to divide by the B. Only the D minus, only the DX minus C. Because I want the B to be left there for my answer. All right, so what I'm left with is AD over DX minus C equals B. And this is my final answer. All right. In example three, we are going to find X. So what is our common denominator? Well, we can say that this is C over 1. So our common denominator, or least common multiple, is BX. So let's multiply every term by BX, A over B, minus <coughs> BX times C. Well, that didn't look good, did it? equals bx times d over x. All right, here these are going to cancel out, leaving us with ax minus bcx equals bd. I'm solving for x. My x terms are already on the same side. So the next step is to factor out the x, which is common to both of these, and then I'm left with a minus bc equals bd. So if I want to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by a minus bc on both sides. This cancels out, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to leave me x by itself. And then x is going to equal bd over a minus bc. Let's do one more and then we'll do some practice. No, I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and do the practice. All right. So we are going to be finding B. M and B cannot be equal to zero. And our least common multiple is MB or BM. Let's just say BM. Keep it in, multi in uh, alphabetical order. So BM times 3Z over M plus BM times N over B equals BM times F, which is a whole number, or F over 1. All right, when I cross cancel, I'm left with 3BZ. Here I'm left with MN equals B, F, M. Again, my alphabetical thing. I'm solving for B, so I need to get this first term here over on the other side so I can get all my B's together. So when I do that, I'm left with M, N equals B, F, M minus 3, B, Z. When I factor out my common factor, I get MN equals B F M minus 3 Z. And I'm trying to get B by itself, so I'm going to need to divide by FM minus 3Z on both sides. 
leaving me with the final answer of MN over FN minus 3Z equals B. All right, in this example, I'm going to find M. I'm going to say this is S over 1. So my least common multiple, and this is X over 1, Least common multiple is going to be my. Alright, so I'm going to multiply everything by my. And then I'm going to cross cancel. Here I'm left with 3 a.m minus m s y plus k y equals m x y I'm solving for m so what I really need to do is I've got to get all my m's on the same side I'm just going to, I think the easiest thing to be do would be to subtract KY from both sides. And then I get 3AM minus MSY equals MXY minus KY. Then I'm going to subtract my MXY from both sides. Get rid of that. I have 3AM minus MSY minus MXY equals KY. Now when I factor out the M, which is the common factor to everything, I'm left with 3A minus SY minus xy equals ky. So I'm going to need to divide by 3a minus sy minus xy on both sides. And when I do that, I'm left with m equals, and this is my final answer. All right, good job. A um, little bit more complicated than the last lesson on rational equations, but I, I know that you all have the skill and you can do it. So don't get stressed, just do your best. And I'll see you next time for lesson 105.